Hello, in this optional video I will talk about time deltas and periods, which are two uh, yeah, more useful tools uh, you can use when working with time series in NumPy, uh, in Pandas, not in NumPy. Okay, so first of all, uh, the time delta. This is just an object that represents uh, an offset in time, and we can create it with this to time delta function, and uh, yeah, we can pass a string to it, and uh, which tells it um, how big this delta is. And if we just execute this with one day, we get this object time delta and has one days as the offset in there. Um, yeah, and then we can do some uh, operations with this delta. So if we look at the schedule again, then um, yeah, we can use this schedule and add this time delta to it. And um, yeah, you can see that we're using the index of our schedule here and then just add this delta. So if we do this, you can see that um, yeah, all of the entries in this index um, just were advanced by one day since the, uh, yeah, the size of our offset of our delta is one day. Okay, and you can do um, yeah, some more um, arithmetic calculations with these timestamps. And uh, yeah, for example, subtracting two timestamps will result in a time delta, which makes kind of sense because uh, these timestamps are basically points on a linear scale. And if we subtract one point from the other, we get basically a one dimensional vector. And this could be represented as this time delta object. And it will automatically calculate um, yeah, how many days um, that were in this time delta. Then, um, yeah, we can also use this uh, calculation that we made here to modify our index of the schedule, for example. Um, here we just add this time delta that we just computed onto the index. And, um, yeah, then we just say that the index should now be just the date of the index and not the time as well. And, um, yeah, now we've um, advanced this um, schedule index by this 437 days. So you can see now um, this is in the year 2019 and it was advanced by two months and yeah, a couple of days, just exactly these 437 days. Okay, um, yeah, with the combination of these timestamps and time deltas, we can also do some more uh, arithmetic. Here, for example, we create a timestamp, which is a Friday in 2018. And then um, we take this Friday and add a time delta of one day to it, and we'll get a Saturday. And then we can do some uh, yeah, calculations with these timestamps um, that we got. So first of all, we'll print just the Saturday the timestamp. Then we uh, will ask if Saturday is greater than Friday. And then we'll subtract uh, Friday from Saturday. So if we do this, um, we can see that first of all, Saturday is this timestamp of the 6th uh, of January in uh, 2018. And this is one day forward from this Friday timestamp, which makes sense because we added just one day. Then we can see that Saturday is larger than Friday since um, yeah, Saturday is more advanced in time than Friday was. And um, yeah, if we compute this delta, this offset between them, we again see that this is just one day. So this is a offset uh, um, yeah, a data time data object again. Okay, and um, yeah, pandas already has some predefined offsets uh, which you can find in this offsets um, object. And uh, if we have this example with a Friday again, then we can say um, Friday plus this PD offsets B day, and B day is a special object that is a business day, um, and will just jump ahead to the next business day. So on a Monday, it's going to go to Tuesday, on Tuesday, it's going to go to Wednesday and so on. But on Friday, it's going to go to Monday instead of Saturday. So it's always going to be on a business day. So if we do this now, you can see from Friday, which was the 5th of January, um, we now are at the 8th of January. So we jumped over the, um, yeah, the weekend, basically. Okay, now coming to this date range, what a date range is, um, this is a function which you can use to yeah, create basically time um, date time indices for your pandas uh, time series. Um, yeah, if your series doesn't already have a date time index, and um, 
yeah, first of all, we'll have a look at our schedule again. So this is um, how we created it before. We just used this datetime index object and passed our dates to that. Um, but what we could also do is just use this date, uh, date range function, pass the starting date and how many periods we want, and then what the frequency should be. So here we set the frequency to one week. So this is going to advance um, this date five times since we set the periods to five um, every time by one week. Okay, and uh, uh, that just returns us this date time index um, yeah, with the dates advanced by one week every time. But note that since we use this W here, this actually means that it's always going to uh, take the last day of a certain week. You can also see this in the frequency here. It tells us W sun, and this stands for um, yeah one week uh, is the frequency, and it's going to choose the Sunday of each week. So um, yeah, this is not actually like a seven day offset, but always one exact week. So it takes the week uh, weekdays into account. If we don't want that, but just uh, from the starting date always one uh, always seven days ahead we can also just specify 7d instead of w and this is going to uh, do just that it's just going to um, go uh, uh, yeah forward in time by seven days instead of just uh, sticking to the weekdays so if we do this uh, you can now see the frequency is now 7d um, so it's going to go seven days ahead always all right um, pandas can also infer these frequencies um, by itself. For example, if we create this datetime index here and just pass three dates here and we set the frequency to infer, then pandas will try to infer what frequency um, was used in this datetime index to um, yeah, generate these days. And you can see here that um, pandas correctly figured out that this uh, datetime index has a frequency of two days since, um, yeah, each of the dates is advanced by two days. Okay, um, yeah, then we can create a series, for example, uh, which in this case is just the range of, um, yeah, the length of our data index that we just created. And of course we can um, set this index to temp, um, which is the data index we just created. And this will, um, yeah, create us uh, this data time series um, using this inferred frequency. And you can see that this frequency was actually propagated into the series. So the series now still tells us this is a frequency of two days. And we can use this, um, for example, to resample then. Um, and if we resample this uh, to daily, then now the, um, yeah, the frequency was changed to one day. And the daytime index now has, uh, yeah, is advanced by one day every time. All right. Um, alternatively, we can also use period, and a period is just um, basically a time frame. Um, you can look at it uh, as that. Um, so it has a date and which it starts, and then a period of how long this time frame lasts. And here we just set this period to seven days. So um, yeah, this period will be from the fourth of uh, June until the um, yeah until the eleventh of June. And um, you can see if we just execute this, um, this period object just tells us the starting date and the, this period. We can actually also just look at the period um, or at the frequency here, tells us it's seven days. And then we can use this um, period here to, um, yeah, to do some more um, things with our uh, time series. Um, yeah, and for example, we could um, use it to um, make our schedule not last for one day, but for yeah, like more than one day, for a whole week. And um, one example for this would be this uh, period range. So here we use the period range function instead of the period constructor. Um, we again specify a starting date, uh, how many periods we want and a frequency. And then this will create these periods. Um, as you can see in the index, this, um, yeah, has basically a starting date and an end date, um, which can be quite useful for such a schedule, for example, since one topic is always for one whole week. Okay, um, yeah, we can also use these um, periods to convert back to a timestamp uh, if we don't want this whole uh, range of dates, 
and we can just call uh, to timestamp on this object. This will just um, yeah discard the the last part and just use the um, beginning of our um, period index. And um, then we can of course uh, yeah convert back to um, period index using this to period function. Then we of course have to specify the uh, the frequency since if we before just had uh, one day uh, one date per um, row here and we want to convert this one day into a free, uh, into a period then we have to con uh, we have to tell it how long this period should be and we do this using the frequency um, parameter so this converts us back to um, yeah a period index and um, yeah the way you can change the period of or the frequency of one of these period objects is just using um, to timestamp and then to to period again, um, where you can then specify a new a new frequency of your period object. Um, yeah, and then uh, down here you have another video uh, which you can have a look at if you want to know more about um, time series analysis using pandas.